Hi, my name is Ann Elliott. I'm the founder and creator of homeschoolingtora.com and Foundations Press. And I wanted to just come to you from Michigan today to just share some battles that are going on. Right now, our representatives and our senators here in Michigan are on break for the holidays. And yet on Monday, the Attorney General of Michigan pressed charges against two homeschooling and foster parenting families and are pressing some pretty serious charges, including life in prison if, if they were successful. Now, I'm not here to talk about that case, but about the response across Michigan to that case, saying that all homeschooling families should be suspected of abusing their children, and therefore we all need to register with the state of Michigan right away. That's what they want to, you know, as soon as the session comes back in in January of 2024, they want to start passing legislation that would require require all homeschooling families to register and not just register if they have their way and if they continue to push as they ha are on record of saying that we would actually have to have child protective service workers come into our homes several times every school year and inspect our homes and talk to our children and make sure that we are not abusing our children. Wow. I just wanted to talk to you about that real quick. Uh, first of all, this is just a huge misinformation campaign from some um, politicians in Michigan that are known to be incredibly wicked, lesbians, homosexuals, um, ab promoting abortion, um, haters of Israel, all of the things that we stand against and scripture stands against. But according to data from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the U.S. Department of Education and many other sources, this is just not true. Homeschoolers, in fact, according to the data, have a lower fatality rate and a lower fatality count from child abuse than children in the public schools. In fact, the research says that legally homeschooled students have 40% fewer fatalities from child abuse than the national average. So any proposal to address child abuse fatalities and child abuse problems in Michigan that solely focuses on homeschool families without also proportionately talking to the greater um, number of students and children that are abused in the state of Michigan that attend public schools and public daycares. Um, that is clearly not preventing fatalities and abuse in children. In fact, it is discriminating against homeschool families like mine themselves and that is not acceptable. In addition, blanket mandates um, that, that want to bring in um, registering and home visits and so on potentially raise Fourth Amendment issues, Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. Now, in case you homeschool families have forgotten what the Fourth Amendment says, it says the Constitution um, protects people from unreasonable searches and seizures by the government. Basically, an across-the-board visit implies that there is probable cause that every single homeschooling family is likely an abusive family. Whatever happened to being proven or to being innocent until proven guilty? This is ridiculous. This is a lie and this is a misinformation campaign. And I want you to check out all the links that are underneath this video. Most importantly, I have a blog post that's up and I'm going to provide you all these links so you can go check it out and verify that the things I'm saying are indeed true. So what do I want you to do? Do I want you to pick up your phone and call your state rep if you live here in Michigan? Sadly, the timing of all of this is ironic. Tonight starts Hanukkah. But that's not what I mean. The timing of this is ironic, uh, is ironic because um, all of our state reps are on recess right now. So you could call them, but you're not going to get a hold of them because of the holidays in December. So this is time to strategize. And, and I have five steps that I want you to do, and I'll go through them very quickly. First of all, pray. This is what Queen Esther did when the freedoms of her people, and in fact, the life of her people, was on the line. She prayed. She didn't just say, you know, before eating her breakfast, oh dear God, please bless us as we homeschool. Don't let anything bad happen. No, she got down on her knees and she fasted and she prayed and she asked all of the people that she knew to fast and pray. And that's what I'm calling you to do too, especially during this month of December. Second, be bold. Don't be afraid. Talk to your friends. Let them know what's going on. If you live in the state of Michigan, or even if you don't, get on social media, but even more importantly, text and call and talk in person to your friends that homeschool and let them know what's going on. If they don't know about it, then they will fall prey to the same misinformation campaigns that are going on. 
So talk to people. This is what you can do during this month of December. Third, join the Michigan Christian Homeschool Network, mission.org, or the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, hslda.org, or preferably both of them. Support them with your dollars. Guys, it's not that expensive. What are you spending money on right now? I'm not at my house today filming this. I'm sitting instead, um, they're doing some roofing at our house. It's really loud. So I wanted to make this video at a place that's quiet. I'm sitting right by McDonald's. You wanna know how many cars have gone through the McDonald's drive through since I started this video? So many. Guys, take your dollars and spend them on things that count for eternity. Don't spend them on silly, frivolous things, buying candy and chocolates and yummy things this month. No, spend your dollars on legal defense for homeschooling families. It is a fight for eternity. And these are real people. I know some of them here in the Lansing, Michigan area. They are real families. They are tired. They have been fielding calls since Monday when this whole thing broke out. They are so tired already. And this battle is just beginning. Pray for them, support them, send them emails and cards and get involved. And most of all, Join those networks. If you have not done it, just do that right now. Number four, plan your time for the month of January. Go ahead and set aside some dates, preferably Mondays in January, because Mondays, state reps across Michigan have office hours. Go in person. Talk to them. Let them see your face. Again, be bold. Let them see your children. They are not abused. What do you have to hide? So go to them. Talk to them. At the very least, call them. Those form letters that hslda.org and other people are sending sending to you to give you ideas, they're great, but you need to use your own voice and your own words because they are believable. Flood their offices with phone calls. Not yet. Wait until January. Then continue. Stay on it, but go in person and get to know your state reps. Get to know them and speak up. Number five, this is one of the most important things. I woke up this morning with a verse on my mind, 2 Peter 1, 7. A friend shared with me, but I just couldn't get it off my mind. It says, um, Yehovah has not given us a spirit of fear, no way, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Memorize that verse. And even more important, go and read first Peter, or first, second Timothy. Let me start over. Go and read second Timothy chapter one, all of it and see the context of God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. You know what the context is? that the faith that was first in your grandmother and your mother, Timothy, is now in you. It's talking to a homeschool kid whose his mother and his grandmother instilled faith in God in him and it changed the world. You are a homeschool family as well. Go read the book of Second Peter. I keep saying that. We're, we're doing Second Peter in our home right now for our own family. Second Timothy. Go read Second Timothy. Good grief. If you are not reading the entire Bible with your family every single day, sitting with your children around the table and reading from God's word with them, equipping them for the battles of our day, then you've got some homework to do. Those are the things I would recommend for the month of December. I'll try to come back with updates later and tell you what's going on. Um, please be in prayer for all of the situation. And thank you so much for giving me your time right now.